the recording is in progress. And uh, welcome everyone. I'm Edwin Rutsch. I'm the director of the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy. And uh, so I'd like to really welcome you to this uh, Democracy Book Club. It's on the, the book called On Tyranny, 20 Lessons from, from the 20th Century by Timothy Snyder. And this is a copy of the book here. It's a very small book, very compact, more like a booklet. And as I mentioned, this call is recorded and this is our first democracy circle. So this is a, so sort of bear with us as we sort of learn and sort of refine this uh, process. And today we're going to be talking about uh, the prologue since this is our first meeting, we're talking about the prologue as well as chapter one, which is do not obey in advance and chapter two, defend institutions. So with that, I'll turn it over to Joan. You wanna take it away? Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, I just wanted to say a couple words about why um, this event. And as Professor Snyder has aptly uh, described, our democracy is not infallible. And at the present, we seem to be at a crossroads. So the question that inspired the book club is what can we do to prevent the loss of democracy and strengthen democratic values. We hope to find those answers together. And um, a question that you might want to consider today is what historical events do you feel have given us some insights into the situation we face today? Or uh, also uh, on chapter two, what institutions have you seen threatened in the last four years? And if uh, you have assisted or supported uh, one of those institutions, what role did you take or would like to take or to contribute? So, so those are just some ideas uh, as we talk about uh, the book today. Thank you again, uh, it's great to see everybody here. Okay, and so we don't wanna do a lot of talking in, in the big group, we wanna, we're gonna be dividing into uh, smaller uh, groups uh, of about four, five, six in each uh, circle. And so we'll be, uh, I'll, what I'll be doing is giving a little intro video, a six minute video of the uh, empathy. We use the empathy circle, we call it democracy circle, the process we use for the dialogue. So I'll be showing a, a short video, six minutes of how to do the process. And I also posted a PDF in the uh, chat window that you can also pull up and, and refer to. And then we're gonna view that, we're gonna go into the empathy circles or the democracy circle breakout rooms. And then we're going to come back for the last 20 minutes, we're going for two hours. And for the last 20 minutes, we're gonna come back and just do a debrief on what your experience was like in the, in the breakout circle. And uh, for if, if, yeah. Um, that is if people have time for it, because we had said two hours. So we welcome everybody to stay if you can. Yeah. So if you can't make the full two hours, you know, just an hour and a half, just wait till we do come to the breakout room. And then um, if someone could post the PDF again, too, for others, uh, appreciate somebody was asking, I see in the chat there. So yeah, so with that. Um, and one other request, uh, could you put in the chat box, uh, the questions that I, I had mentioned, just if anybody uh, needs that for reference. I did put it in there. Somebody could repost it too. Okay. I'd be willing to okay. repost it. So the yeah. questions were in the chat box. If when new people come into the breakout room and they, they, they don't see what's been posted before. So if someone would be willing to just copy and paste that would appreciate it. So uh, let's see, where are we uh, do, 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 do. Make sure I got everything on my list here. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do next is uh, show the uh, how to empathy circle practice. Uh, and while we're doing that, I'll be creating the, the breakout rooms as well. So let me see where we have that video. And... Oh. Here we go. And please mute too if you're um, if you're just joining us. 
here we go. This, this is the this is sort of a, just the the basic process that we're going to be using for the dialogue. Founding director of the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy, I'd like to uh, welcome you to this short presentation on how to take part in a basic empathy circle. So next, let's look at uh, the step by step how to take part. Uh, an empathy star circle starts with two to seven participants. Here on the screen, we have four participants, which I find is an ideal number. There are four basic roles, and the roles rotate among the participants as the empathy circle unfolds. One, the speaker, is the first person to speak. Two, is the uh, active listener who actively listens to the speaker. There's the silent listeners, they quietly observe and witness. And the facilitator who organizes, schedules, and hosts the circle. Uh, they also do the timekeeping and they have some experience with the process and help keep participants in the process. However, everyone has the responsibility to hold the, the, the process and the practice. So to begin with, the facilitator will start the empathy circle. They welcome the participants. Uh, they uh, lead introductions if the participants don't know each other. The facilitator invites participants to give short introductions, for example, their name, where they're from, and something personal about themselves. Uh, the facilitator then reviews the empathy circle process to remind everyone uh, how it works. They announce the discussion topic if there is one. Even if there is a topic, you can always talk about what is alive for you. That is what is on your mind in the moment. And five, uh, you can, they set the speaker time limits, perhaps uh, five minutes, for example. And the facilitator then asks who would like to start the, to be the first speaker. So at that point, the participant volunteers to be the first speaker. As speaker, you select who you will, who will be your active listener, and you can select anyone that you want. Uh, you speak about the topic given or whatever is alive for you. And so you'll speak a bit until you have maybe expressed an idea or two, and then you want to pause to give the active listener a chance to recap what they understand uh, that you are saying and feeling. Uh, if you say too much, the listener may have difficulty in reflecting it. As the active listener, you are listening to the speaker to get an understanding of what they are saying and what is important to them. You are giving them your full attention as a supportive companion on their inner journey and exploration. Uh, when the speaker pauses, uh, you recap your understanding of what they said and how they feel by reflecting the essence of that in your own words. Uh, you can summarize, paraphrase, or even say the speaker's words back to them. Even though you may have a strong impulse to respond with your own ideas, judgments, analysis, advice, and sympathy, or, or even questions, you know, resist the impulse to do so. Uh, because uh, uh, these common responses block the speaker from moving along their internal journey. You will be able to say whatever you want when it is your turn to be the speaker. So if you don't reflect the understanding to the speaker's satisfaction, you, they can always say it again. Then as speaker, you check, do you feel understood to your satisfaction? If you do not feel understood, you can say it again, perhaps in different words. Uh, if you do feel understood, continue sharing. Again, after speaking a bit, pause to give your active listener a chance to recap their understanding of what you said. As the active listener, you again share your understanding of what the speaker said and meant. The cycle of speaking and reflecting continues until you as the speaker do not have anything else you'd like to say or until you get a signal from the timekeeper. Uh, if you get a signal from the timekeeper, then finish up what you're saying in a sentence or two. 
after you get a final reflection, you can end your turn by saying something like, I feel fully heard or something like that to indicate you are done with your speaking turn. At that point, the roles uh, then rotate. The active listener becomes the speaker. The person they select becomes the new active listener. For everyone having equal time, it is good to select someone that hasn't spoken lately, but it is your choice. The others in the circle become the silent listeners. This process of turn, taking turns in speaking and active listening continues for whatever time is allotted for the empathy circle. And this was uh, just a very short introduction. The best way to learn the practice is taking part and doing it. Uh, there is more in-depth material on taking part in an empathy circle and facilitating one at empathycircle.com. Thank you for listening. There we go. Okay, so we're ready to go into our circles and uh, we have people who have taken the, our Empathy Circle facilitation training, they'll be uh, facilitating the breakout rooms. So the first one, which I'll be in with you is uh, Kevin will facilitate. Uh, the next one is Linda and then Celine. And uh, uh, Deidre, do you feel okay with uh, co-facilitating with Jana? She's feeling, okay, great. So maybe you'll facilitate and, and uh, the one with Jana and then uh, Larry will facilitate one too. And we'll have four to six people in each uh, circle. I'm gonna put the, uh, if someone can post the questions again that uh, Joan had asked, that uh, you heard the questions that Joan po posed. Uh, and you can also talk about whatever's alive for you. You know, you've read the chapters, just whatever comes up for you, you you're welcome to uh, discuss You know that as well. We're going to be doing, um, five minute turns. So one person will speak for five minutes and uh, get reflections. And uh, then we'll just kind of be doing the process. So uh, I think we're ready to go into the rooms. We have about an hour and uh, 10 minutes, a little bit less, and then we'll be coming back into the, into the full room. So here we go and uh, see you in your breakout rooms. And Kevin, this room is going to have uh, six of us in it. And yeah, so. This is going to be recorded. This part is recorded. Yep. So hello, everyone. Welcome to the M3 Circle. We're going to have a discussion. Um, like Edwin showed the video earlier, we're going to start off with a listener and then a speaker. Um, that individual will speak for two minutes, Edwin. Uh, five minutes, up to five, five minutes. minutes. Mm -hmm. Up to five minutes. And then we also have a listener who will listen to that person. Again, remembering that as the listener, you're there to repeat back, paraphrase, to give understanding that you're hearing what the listener is saying. It's not the time to give an opinion. It's only a time to be present for that person. <coughs> as the listener, you're allowed to speak whatever's on your mind or guiding towards the question for the democratic circle that we're here for. Um, you will have five minutes to speak as the listener, and then someone else, then this listener will become the speaker, and that's how the rotation. Who would like to be the first speaker? And if you would be the first uh, listener, Kevin, then okay, just to, yeah, and I'll be the first listener to demonstrate uh, what's going on. So who can I? Who would like to be the first speaker? Okay. Um, I cannot really say by his name. Susan, Simple would you like on. to be? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Susan, would you like to be the speaker, the first speaker? Um, could I be the third speaker? Oh wow! I guess I phrased that wrong. Susan, can you speak for us first? Okay. Uh, the reason I I said okay, can I be the third speaker? is because I did buy the book, but <clears throat> I got confused because there was, there's another um, version of the book, uh, graphic, more 
And I think uh, the reason I got confused was because they said that that was more recent and this one is kind of out of date and then I didn't know what to do. And so I apologize that I didn't read it for the call. No, no problem. Okay, good. Um, so I can, I, talk, I can talk though and you can reflect. No, thank you for reflecting um, that you didn't get the right book. Um, this book you have is more graphic. Um, and you would like this to be third. That's kind of how it's going to go. So I'm going to pick on someone else, not pick on choose someone else. Unless someone like to volunteer. Okay, I did a lady first. Glenn, can I have you as my first speaker? Sure, I'll give it a try. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so, okay, introduce myself, uh, say something personal about myself. I'm recently retired. I've been a teacher all my life. Um, but I think what's most relevant to me is I just finished six years uh, as a government official. I was um, borough council president the last four years. And before that, I was on borough council for two years. Okay. And, and that to me is very relevant to this because, you know, I've had a hard time so, understanding. So, Glenn, I'm going to have you pause for a second. One of the most important things is, or for some people like myself, small chunks, it's better for me to reflect back and okay. that way I don't lose the content of your conversation. And, and if that's helpful for all of you also be remembering to say small chunks, because um, Glenn gave me his teacher, six years, retired, of those, and I might have missed something and I don't want, I want to be able to respect your conversation. Okay, the most okay. important thing was, yeah, the last six years I've been a government official. Okay, the um, last six years you've been a government official. Awesome. Pre president of the borough council who kind of, kind of was overseeing my town that I live in, in Pennsylvania. And uh, two more years before that on council uh, because okay. I was so involved in the Democratic Party, yeah. So you were very much involved in the Democratic Council. You was also president in Borough County, which is in Pennsylvania for the last two and three years. <laughs> okay. I might get the year wrong. One more time. That's okay. Small chunks. Four years as president of the council. I just finished in January and okay. I've been on the council for six years. And it was very important to me. I mean, I got into it by accident because I needed a candidate, but I've always been so appreciative of government. Okay. So you've been very much very appreciative of government and you've been in for like four and six years in this government field and getting a candidate. So again, I'm not trying to repeat as a parrot that's trying to capture the most glean. Yeah, not, as, not as a candidate, I was the borough president. You was the borough president, yes. Okay, we're gonna move forward, yes. Okay, and you know, um, to me, you know, the idea that um, democracy is something um, that's not appreciated, that's taken for granted, um, as, the, as this, you know, I read the whole book, as the book really demonstrates, uh, is surprising. Well, so you, very su it's surprising to you that the democratic process is not appreciated. Um, you read the whole book and it's just, you know, astonishing to you that it's not seen in such a positive way, if I may say. Yes, okay. yes, because, you know, uh, again, to be personal for a moment, you know, my grandparents um, fled to this country because they were being, you know, raped and pillaged and, you know, and, and to be in a country with a democracy, I always grew up thinking, wow, that's incredible. <laughs> and, you know, and the fact, I mean, what this book brings out, though, is how fragile they are. Right. So um, your grandparents and family was persecuted and to understand it to be in a democratic process and not to be appreciative of it is just so astounding. Again, short first. Uh, and okay. and what this book really okay, going looking at the first couple chapters as the book uh, the whole book shows. I mean, you know, like all those democracies in Europe that just faded away and you know people didn't fight for them. Um, I think really brings up our not taking seriously that we could lose our democracy too. Right. The book brings up a lot of situations where democracy was not fought for. 
and to realize that we could lose our democracy also. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how many how much time I used up. Is somebody timing me? I'm timing you. Okay. So when the time comes up, I'll put my phone up. Okay. Get about a minute and a half. Okay, great. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, and this idea in the in the first uh, chapter about you know trying to please the leaders and doing what's right, you know, um, I guess <laughs> I've always been a stubborn Aries. <laughs> and the idea of like trying to please the leaders and obey in advance and follow a leader, you know, um, which is a real threat to democracy. Um, you know, again, that seems like a foreign thing to me. I mean, to me, I, I guess that's why I'm a philosopher. I always question things and I, you know, I, th I think this anticipatory obedience, you know, trying to figure out what you're supposed to obey and then do it, to me, is also hard to understand. Okay, I'll wrap that up in reference to this obey and the please that leadership is, you know, so astounding. And you being an Aries is like, it doesn't make, it doesn't make a lot of sense in reference to, <laughs> you know, that pleasing and obeying what they say is very astounding. And, and that's something that was very, challenging or interesting to wrap around in reference to democracy. Yeah, I think it's cha challenging, and but it's also interesting that so many people do that, yeah. Okay, and very interesting and challenging that so many people do that. So that's the first demonstration. Um, I struggled in the beginning to listen to Glenn and Rufty was saying too, but again, I never gave an opinion. I just went forward and repeat. So now, Glenn will can be I, can the I, list. Can I just mention, yes. maybe we should go to four minutes, uh, Kevin, because we have okay. a couple more people join. So just to make sure we have enough time. So we move to uh, four minutes and now you'll be the speaker and select your listener. Glenn. <laughs> no, you don't yes. want to speak to other people to kind of mix it up a little bit. Okay, so um, I'll be the speaker now and who will be my listener? I'll listen. Okay, Evan with my listener. Um, as, as Susan was, um, I guess when I think about the book and also what Glenn was saying, I was challenged by some of the up and down topics in reference to the expectation. I would say in reference to what Glenn was saying, you know, you're expected to do this, you're expected to do that. Mm -hmm. um, in reference to how they de define democracy. So you, you were a bit challenged by how the definition of democracy was in the book? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, I was a bit challenged by, um, I guess in reading it, and I guess I was conflicted by where I'm living now. And I guess that's where I was back and forth. So I didn't really get a chance to dive into it. Kind of like, okay, let me put this down and come back to it. Because <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I was in my own conflict. Oh, you're just having your own conflict about it, sort of understanding what the what the book is saying, or what the you're, you know, a little un, wasn't quite clear. Yeah, yeah, I was um, in conflict in reference to what the book is saying, and I guess in reference to my quote reality right now, I actually mm -hmm. put the book down and haven't really picked it up to embrace it again. Um, mm -hmm. It was just very. Um, I guess I was. Um, flooded with so much media that the book lost a little, um, didn't have the zeal that I thought and lost a little rele relevant to me. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, I might have been. so you're being flooded with all this media and somehow the book didn't have that relevance that you thought it would have. So you set it down, you haven't really gotten back to it. Right. So I was looking to get more of an understanding from this circle and reference to other people's opinion or thoughts on it. Yeah, so you're really hoping that out of this circle, you'd kind of get more insights uh, just by hearing what other people's opinions are. Right. Uh, and, it, from it, a, it. Yeah. and it's surprising to hear Glenn, because I'm an Aries. And I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> like, not, not today. <laughs> so, um, so I was hoping to get more from the circle in reference to those various opinions that I appreciate with the circle how so many objectives come to this. Uh, you're an Aries as well, so uh, like Glenn, and so you're hope just really hoping to get more insight uh, about the book from others here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and I, on that, I will surrender my time okay. um, to hear more voices. 
Okay, then uh, I'll, I'm the speaker and I'll select Susan for this. this a, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about this whole uh, book club. It was uh, Joan, my partner's idea. So I'm uh, really kind of excited about this to see how it works. Uh, you're excited about the book club and you really want to see how it works. It was suggested to you by your partner, Joan. Mm. And Glenn is Joan's brother. <laughs> this is all in the family. Oh. <laughs> wow. yeah. Glenn is Joan's brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do I think about the democracy? I, you know, there's, I heard a, 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 a talk by Gloria Steinem and she was saying the core of democracy are these circles. So what we are doing here is the core of democracy. It's when citizens can get together and talk to each other and hear each other. Everyone has sort of an equal voice. That's really the, the core uh, of democracy. So not only are we exploring democracy, we are doing it, uh, I'd say. So you um, heard Gloria Steinman speak and um, I guess what inspired you, am I allowed to say, I guess what inspired you, even though you didn't- You can take a guess, yeah, so. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Is that the core of democracy is when individuals come together in small groups and start to express what really matters to them. And that's something that you're hoping will evolve from the book circle here. Yeah, and that uh, it, it's really, it's saying that, hey, there's not one person in charge. Like we tried to get right into the circle so everyone has a voice, not somebody sitting, uh, you know, lecturing for an hour, you know, kind of being the boss, this is the way it is. It's like, let's get into these circles and let's talk with each other. That's like the essence of, of democracy. Yeah. To, uh, there's not one person that's going to tell us this is the way it is. We come together to hear everyone's voice and make decisions based on that. Exactly, yeah, I feel fully heard, thank you. You're welcome. I, I can speak now if you want. Yeah, now you select whoever you'd like to speak to, maybe someone who hasn't spoken yet, uh, Carla who's, or Kenya the, or Candy. Who's, who's gonna listen to me? Is yeah, you select your listener. Uh -huh. Okay, um, Kenya? Would you like to listen to me? I would love to witness what you okay. have to share with the group. Okay, great. So even though I didn't read the, the book yet, um, I came to the group because I want to know what I can do to strengthen our democracy because I can't imagine what it would be like not, or maybe I don't want to, I don't want to live in a place where we're not a democracy. So what I, I hear you saying, Susan, is that you haven't read the, the book yet, but you joined the group because you want to do you want to do more and learn how you can really better the democracy or learn more so that you can add to the democracy and you can't see yourself living outside of anything other than this democracy. It would be so scary to me not to have a democracy. And I want to find out what I can do to preserve it. So I hear you saying that, hey, you don't see yourself living outside of a democracy and how you can do things to preserve the democracy that you're living within right now. And, and that it would be very scary for me not to live in a democracy. So I hear that it's, it would be very scary for you to live anything in any other thing other than a democracy. And that that's why you're here and yeah. um, really um, to, to gain more, yeah, it would be scary for you to live it, anything else. And, and I wanna say something very important in the time I have left. I had a really strong realization this morning. So I hear you, you wanna sh share something that's very important and you had a strong realization and so you would like to share that. Yeah. Um, I was in a conflict with somebody over, you know, whatever, just conflict, conflict, you know. Mm -hmm. And then Thich Nhat Hanh passed away yesterday. Mm. So I hear Thich Nhat Hanh passed away yesterday and you've been in a conflict with somebody recently 
And yes, I hear. And I really got how important it is to just, I, I want to just live peace. That, that's, that's my light. I want to just live peace. And instead of seeing this man as an enemy, I just want to have compassion for his suffering. So I hear you saying that you want to live um, with peace um, and, and you want to have compassion and you just want to be in that in terms of peace and compassion and living with, with that, with that individual or instead of seeing him as an enemy right instead of seeing them as a comp as an enemy right yeah learn how to how can i just uh, not get into right and wrong anymore so i i hear you saying you don't want to go right and wrong and you want to live in peace and compassion with this person that was the time too. Sorry. You might want to make a notice because some people can't see that when you hold it up. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh That's yeah, I didn't, I didn't notice it. Okay. I Thank you. Real thing. Okay. I couldn't, good. Yep. I couldn't see you. If you're on a cell phone, you don't. You only see one person usually. Yeah. So yeah. okay. I'm I'm gonna, so Dean Woodward. Oh, Dean Woodward. Are you gonna wrap up what she just said? Yes. On her last part. Um, Possible. So. Um, Susan, thank you for sharing. And what I heard you saying is that you want to live in um, peace and harmony with the individual. Um, so, so, so now you are the. Pardon? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I, I didn't say I want to live in peace and harmony with the individual. No, you just said peace and harmony. I mean, yeah. and, yeah, so sorry, you said peace and harmony. And so I'm kind of now discombobulated, kind of trying to get back to what you said and what they're saying. <laughs> oh, it was a long okay. time ago, I got it, yeah. No, so peace and, and so and he's like, oh, do you want to go back? So she said, peace, harmony, <laughs> so. That's good. So now we want to continue on. You are now the speaker and you can pick a listener. You want to take a, we can take a minute, take a second. I, uh, let's see, and I'm going to do, be short. I don't need to do anything long. And how about Carla? Um, would you like to listen? Yes. Thank you. Um, so I'll just start real quick. Um, so I, I had this on my calendar and so I was like, oh, I need to, let me see. It, it seems on tyranny and, and different things. And so book club, and I was like, oh, when I joined, I said, oh, I didn't read the tyranny book. So you have been looking forward to this, but then you realize that you haven't actually read the book. Yes, that's about right. So I went online to look at tyranny to see what it was kind of about. And I was like, oh, tyranny kind of there's certain things that I probably believe and I said maybe I should leave <laughs> so when you went online and looked at it you thought some of the things you kind of believe so maybe you should leave did you mean leave this group well leave the group because I haven't read the book I just saw online the prologue and I was reading through that prologue and it was on democracy and fast fascism and different things and then i was like since i haven't read the book maybe i should leave <laughs> so after doing the research the thought was it was it was fascism and democracy and because you haven't read the book maybe you should leave yeah I, so in that i probably after you witness me, I should probably go ahead and leave this group um, because I didn't read the book. <laughs> so, yeah. You're saying, I hear you saying that after I'm done listening to you, that you should, because you haven't read the book, leave the group. Probably, yes. That is what I'm saying is 
the I've read a couple pages and um, in terms of democracy in the United States, I don't think it was ever meant for me. And so therefore, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> so I'm questioning whether I engage more about how I feel about America and my place in America as well. And yeah. So, oh, that so, seems like that's my time. <laughs> I hear you saying that you're, you um, are questioning democracy because you're not sure that democracy ever was set up to, to be inclusive and include people like you, and that you're not sure that you want to have a discussion about how that affects you. Yeah. <laughs> We can leave it there. I'm, yeah. Well, I hope you will stay because just talk about whatever's alive for you. You don't, it's fine that you haven't read the book. Just glad to have you. So please stay. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. So, caller, um, you have now been the, the listener. I lost my train of thought, Edwin. You would yeah, now be just, the speaker. Yeah, he's now the speaker. Select maybe Candy, who hasn't spoken yet or listened. So yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can oh. Candy, would you be my listener? Yep. So this is a brand new system. I'm that sh I I got included because people I know who who said they were coming aren't here, and um, I had heard about the book. Last night, the author was actually on Bill Maher. So I thought, well, he sounded kind of interesting, captivated me. I am brand new to Audible. So I clicked on Audible and I now have the book. Like everybody else, I was trying to catch up today. Um, want me to recap as right um had a similar experience um heard about you heard about this event from other people and it sounded like something you might want to do and you also happened to catch uh, uh timothy snyder on bill maher last night so that kind of it sounds like maybe that was another uh impetus to join you or you listen to the book and here you are is that right so what I realize is I've been I've been retired for twenty some years, I'm uh, and at that that gave me an opportunity to take a look at politics, old works, and um, so twenty years of activism, and I have this sinking feeling that we are sliding further behind. Yeah, um, again, I, I think I hear you. Uh, you've been an activist for 20 years. And when you look at, well, you also, you're retired and you have, sounds like maybe more time for activism and you look out now at what's happening around you and you are, uh, you see that we are sliding backwards. Is that right? Yes. So in the beginning, the buildup to the Iraq war and I, wanting to hold the line and, and push back. And here we are 20 years later in, in just utter chaos, utter, uh, a, a terrifying situation. It sounds like you're looking back uh, to the period around the Iraq war 20 years ago and which you, um, you see that as the, as a going back to there where things have uh, uh, have gotten to a point where we are now and you uh, feel terrified as the, about the way things have evolved over the past 20 years. So uh, I, I look, I, I started listening to the book. I've gotten past, I don't know which, which lesson I, I progressed to. And then I watched the little videos and what I realized is everything that he's saying is, I agree with everything that he's pointing out book 
we've had January 6th and it just becomes more and more and more overwhelming. Yeah, um, you listen to the book, a couple of the chapters and you looked at the videos and uh, you agree with everything he's saying, especially now in light of January 6th. And um, I took notes, but you, you're very concerned about where things are about the state of our democracy. The, the question was posed by Joan, which institutions do we feel we've lost? Well, we've just had an unbelievable exposure that the courts no longer are interested in democracy, interested in, in the constitution. So we've lost the courts. We've lost Congress. I started out right after Citizens United with um, move to amend, trying to amend the constitution that says money isn't speech and that corporations aren't people. And at this stage of the game, those people who are elected spend 90% of their time collecting money and then doing the bidding of the people who gave them money. And you know, how many ways can you lose democracy? You lost it through the courts, you lost it through Money is as speech. Right. So, picking up on the question that Joan posed about institutions, you have identified the Farm. the court system as having been yeah, having right. uh, not come through for us. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Sorry, my clock stopped ringing. <laughs> So, Candace, if you can pick someone to listen to you, you can. Uh, we have four minutes. Glenn. Sure. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I shared the experience of Carla today. Um, I, I listened to Bill Maher in the, on Saturday morning and heard Snyder. And I actually had heard about this yesterday because I participate in Humanity Rising. So I had heard about this event. Um, but uh, like, well, I mean, I knew Snyder, I mean, I've been listening to him over the last few years and, um, you know, I, I share the sentiment expressed by many of you that, um, you know, we're in a really horrible place. It's like, you just have to be paying attention. It's quite obvious what's happening here. I will never forget watching January 6th. Small chunks. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Remember to pause. <laughs> um, so you also watched Bill Maher, Bill Maher and uh, saw Tim Snyder, Timothy Snyder, and you had heard of, you had heard about this. Uh, I think he just said yesterday through this organization you're part of, Democracy Rising, Humanity Rising, Humanity Rising. Sorry, Humanity Rising, um, and you know you also are very concerned about uh you know our institutions yeah i'm just introduce my i mean i live in cambridge massachusetts and um i was one of the small handful of people 10 years ago who um tried to get elizabeth warren to run for office i volunteered my heart out for her for a year and a half and um i think we need more people like her but when i hear her like you know like even the most intelligent observers and people who are in a position to do something, you, there's this undertone of despair. And it's very, it's just really bad. And I have um, two children and two grandchildren and uh, a stake in the future. Um, and it's just very disheartening. And I wanna pick up on something that Kenya said. But, uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh -oh. Candy lives in Cambridge, and uh, she was part of a small group of people, maybe 10 people or so, who are originally trying to get Elizabeth Warren to run for office. And uh, it's obvious that you really admired her. But now, uh, you know, uh, watching her, you feel that there's this kind of despair underlying even people like Elizabeth Warren. And, uh, you know, it's just adding to your concern. 
And, you know, you're somebody who has uh, two children and two grandchildren. And so you're very concerned about the future. I am. I am. And just in terms of, I just want to pick up on something that Kenya said, like, you know, to the extent that I can understand what she was saying, I do, I think, I'm trying to. And I think those of us that are concerned about democracy don't, it's not simply a matter of preserving what we had, it's about making it better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, no, like, I... so, in other words, not just like running in place, not just keeping the shitty, a uh, shitty excuse for democracy that we have, but making it better by having more Elizabeth Warrens and more AOCs and more Stacey Abrams and, and all, you know, the people who, who see what's possible in this country. And okay. um, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty- Time. You know, yeah. <laughs> Time. So uh, Candy, and I might add like myself, <laughs> wanted to say to Kenya uh, that, uh, you know, it's not about preserving the democracy that we had. It's about making the shitty, <laughs> shitty excuse for democracy into something better. Um, I, I guess that's that gets at the heart of what you were saying. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so, you. what happens now? Well, we we still have time, and we still have time for go another yeah, round. Yeah, we got the. Uh, we just keep going for the next, uh, I don't know how long it is. Uh, we still have about 45 minutes. So right. we just keep going for the time allotted. So it's Glenn's well, I, turn. So I pick a- uh, Glenn was a time. listener, so he becomes so the Glenn. speaker. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've become the speaker, okay. Yes, and I guess I want to listen. Um, well, Kenya. <laughs> Because I, I wanted to start out saying, uh, yeah, I was very alarmed when you were talking because I don't want to lose your voice in this conversation. Because, um, you know, what Susan, what, no, I'm sorry, Candy said, uh, you know, I don't think this is a book praising democracy. It's showing that it's been troubled all along. It hasn't really been a democracy in, a, in any full meaning of that word, but that it could even get worse. <laughs> you know, that's what the book's about. So what I hear you saying, Glenn, is that you were alarmed um, when I said, well, that you were alarmed and that my voice, mat or my voice matters and not really having me go outside of the group. I, you didn't say, well, she said you were alarmed. And then you also said um, that, um, democracy is not something to um, necessarily, uh, sorry, um, so democracy is not something that you have to change, but something to make better, uh, or not, not make better, so I'm sorry that I'm flipping those things, that you don't have to make it better, but just really Sorry that I'm mixing up your words. That's okay, so Tim, what I was saying was that this book, when you do get to read it, he never once pretends that we had a good democracy. He's always saying it was, had all these problems. And like Candy saying, you know, has to become more of a democracy because it wasn't really a democracy. But all he's doing is pointing out all the dangers of like how it could even get worse. So I hear you saying that Hey, um, this author is really pointing out to every uh, to how this could get worse, and how it was never really a democracy. Um, some of the fl flaws and stuff from the beginning, and so really kind of pinpointing. Hey, these are some things that just to be aware of. If I hear yeah. you correctly, yeah, and that's why I think your voice and all of our voices are important because we're all gonna be able to see different things that have been missing from our democracy, you know, and it, that it, you know, that really have to be fixed before we can move any forward at all. And before the things that have been wrong with us really just drag us all the way down. So I hear you saying in terms of, um, really things that need to be like all of our voices need to actually be heard to kind of recognize what needs to be fixed within the democracy that we currently have to kind of 
as we move forward, we need to all put in our what we need to to make it maybe better, <laughs> better than it was. Yeah. Yeah, better, and to not have it even go further, you know, towards tyranny, you know, and towards, uh, you know, just benefiting a couple people while everybody else gets screwed, basically. I mean, that's what the book's really about. <laughs> you know, it's it's just for the few rich and powerful people. And um, there's all these ways that we could not realize that their time, uh, it could become even worse. Right. So um, what I hear you saying, and instead of, because the book is kind of saying, instead of it actually benefiting a few people, um, that it can actually and become worse, that we can actually do more so that it can actually um, benefit more than just those key people that the few. Time, <laughs> and, I'm sorry, yeah, great. I'm trying to um, synthesize what you say and I, I'm, I'm listening and I'm just, I know it's time and I'm, I'm trying to, tell you what you have said back. So I probably need to take notes so I don't forget. <laughs> no, I felt heard. You, you did a good job. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm listening. <laughs> so Gwen, um, thank you um, for sharing sharing your voice. I appreciate that. Okay. So Kendra is now you're the speaker and you get to speak a list on um, pick a listener. I apologize, my phone keeps going on silent when it goes off. <laughs> no, sorry if I interrupt your flow. I just one second. Mary, were you in another group? Yes. Were you in five? I, somehow I don't see, it's not letting me move you. Um, you should be moving to the other group. So uh, anyway, Kenya, it's your turn to speak and select a listener. And I, 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 but first, Mary, are you seeing a button to push to get into your group? Does that? I'm not sure why you're not. There you go. Okay. I hope that. Um, I will choose Kevin. Yes, I will be your listener. <laughs> if you can give me you. small small chunks, it'd be helpful. Yeah. I hear you. Um, uh, I um, so I before coming to this meeting, I was in a meeting with Dr. Joy DeGroy. Well, before coming to this meeting, you were in a meeting with Dr. Joy DeGroy. I'm pronouncing yeah. correctly. Yeah, DeGroy, um, yeah. and I might be mis mispronouncing her name, but she wrote um, the post-traumatic slave syndrome yes she and wrote the post traumatic um slave yes syndrome. the post -tra traumatic so like ptsd from slave syndrome so mm -hmm. i came from that to this to the t tyranny um thing and when i left that i was actually she gave a lot of great information about the history of the u.s you left that came to this and during that time she gave a lot of great history on the u.s yeah the history of the united states of america and how um it was so coming here i see that um this democracy was really made for white men who were rich and um so it wasn't made for a person who looks like me. Coming from that, you heard her say that this democracy was made for white men, but not for a person of, that looks like you of color. And that is very true. And so therefore, when, when individuals talk about a democracy, I, I don't ever believe that that democracy was made for me because I was in the constitution three fifths of a person. So when people talk about democracy, it's hard for you to embrace it because you're in a constitution as three fifths of a person. Correct. So when I think of wanting to make something better, 
than it has already been, I almost feel like we need to tear the shit down and make something 100% new. So, so when you're part of a conversation about making something better, you feel as though you need to tear it down to yeah, make something shit. new. <laughs> tear the shit down. Yeah. So because I don't think that this system is going to make it anywhere different than where it's been. You know, it's kind of doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Right. So when you think about it, um, this system, along with being teared down, you don't think it's going to be any different as we try to make it better because it's doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. So I think with that being said, I'm like, and I, I don't know where to go other than I want to wish the best. But in all reality, I think that it's going to, uh, until America um, addresses the root cause of how it came to be, I don't know if it can get better than it is unless it's down. So, oh, and until America can address the root cause of democracy or what it's supposed to be, you don't think it's going to get better because we're never really at the, the root cause of where it came from. What is I think the history of this country is really not good. So, um, and it's not really a, a, until that, how can we solve, how can we heal? So right. I appreciate this group and in terms of listening to each other, but you know, I, I'm, I'm a black woman in America. Oh, and there's my time. <laughs> um, you appreciate this group, um, but being a black woman, um, you're not really sure where it's going to go or if it will change. Did I get that correct? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess it's my time to be the speaker. Do I still have time? Um, who would like to be my listener? Mm -hmm. Harry Glenn. Um, call, Carol? Am I pronouncing it right? Carla? Carla. Carla, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Need my glasses. I'll be, I'll be your listener. I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess um with live for me is picking up more on what Kenya was saying and kind of what I was feeling in the beginning of this. Um, the understanding of democracy um is challenging for me because I'm not always sure of how I'm living in it. So I guess that was my challenge with embracing the book of the little bit that I read. So I hear you saying that you're challenged with the book because you're not sure that you embrace democracy? Right, um, I'm, yes. I'm not sure that I embrace them. I'm, I do embrace democracy for what it gives in reference to the struggles in reference to where I live now versus if I was wearing it, living in another country. Um, I, I'll put that measure out there. So you've lived in another country where you no, I, I wouldn't want to live in another country to do this fight. So. Okay. You wouldn't want to live in another country, but you're not sure that democracy is. Oh, I would say true. Um because when when I read other things or my own history, when I think what uh, Kenya says, I'm very familiar with Dr. Joy. I, I embrace I love her work in reference to trauma. Um she gives an example in, of a black boy who goes into a market, um, how he's treated in reference to, he goes to do something, look at something, his mom corrects him, tells him to stand still. A white boy does the same thing in reference to doing something. And they both go to the same school and a Caucasian woman says, well, I think he's a really great student. But we were taught early on, you are not allowed to be a great student because from slavery, you will be the first one picked. Whereas though the other person, that is considered the norm. And I'm going to go down that path, but that's where democracy challenges me at. Because even in my job, I have to prove myself twice as much in reference to my other counterpart for what I do as a compliance officer. That's a lot, my apologies. <laughs> okay, I'll try. So, you love the book that Kenya is talking about, and I'm and I can't remember the author's name. 
but you reiterated an example that she gave of a small boy in a in the market and then you talked about being in school and um that african americans are prohibited from being smart okay. because no I, I i'll stop you there um so when we two people white and black are in the same situation but the expectation is different from them um the black mother has to do a lot of more to protect her child the Caucasian mother may not have to do as much because society has accepted their behavior as okay. And I'm, I'm gonna stop there, to, yeah. Okay, so the expectations between the, the black child and the white child, the Caucasian mother doesn't need to be worried about her child in the same way that the black mother has to be worried for her child and is giving messages to that child on how to behave right and i guess when i think about democracy i'm thinking about those two children in the same neighborhood on the same block but they are treated so differently from the law by the law of the law and reference to a disturbance or coming to knock on the door and, and so this extends into the neighborhood where the two children are treated differently by the law Mm -hmm. and, and I guess that's where early on when I talked about not understanding the book or able to embrace it, because when I think of how social media puts out so much information, good, bad, or indifferent, it has brought another light to America. I'm not sure exactly what you were saying, uh, but that social media has um, put out all kinds of information, but that it doesn't address the issue that you are concerned about. Oh, it, it does address the issue in a faster way. And I think <clears throat> this is why democracy will have to change to address how we are living today. And again, break again, embracing the root cause. Because sometimes I'm not, I'm wondering the difference between the Republican and Democrat. So um, democracy needs to change because people are the, the root cause of the issue that, it, that you're talking about, the difference in the way two children would be treated is, is the root cause and that the difference between Democrats and Republicans doesn't, you don't see someone who's actually going to represent you. Yes, because you're you're given one conversation, but a lot of times when the, everything starts, you're still following the, the the situation of who has and who doesn't, and who's trying to maintain in social government. Um, and I think that's the challenge. I I'm challenged with de democracy, where it's still a big business, and whoever the product is, always suffers. And we as human beings, I look at now become the product. So yes. you're seeing you're seeing democracy as a system that supports those who have, does not support those who don't have, and that it is failing only everyone but that select group at the top. Yes, that's my time. Um, you are now the speaker, and you can speak, um, pick your listener. This is a difficult job to be a listener. It, it, oh. it is okay. This... <laughs> um, Edwin, you can be my listener. Yes, listening. Okay. Uh, I'm wondering if democracy, which is simply a system, it's neither a good nor a bad, it's a system. And the way that it's practiced in America isn't democracy. I don't think anybody said that it's practiced here the way that we would want it to be or the way that it, it where everyone has a voice. So you don't see that, uh, that democracy is just a system, but you don't see it really practiced here in the sense that everyone has a voice. So this isn't 
uh, this isn't the painful legacy that that racism has, but it was a real eye opener for me. We had, uh, I'm in Florida. We had a Walmart distribution center planned for two years and the public didn't know. Mm -hmm. So this isn't as big of an issue like race is, but there was a, a Walmart planned in, in your area and nobody knew about it, was told about it for several years. So they opened up public comment and we went, groups having different issues, the people whose property would be affected and basically demolished, the people who would be working there, the people who would have children's trying to get on a school bus while 5,000 trucks went past their kids. Yeah, so the people who'd be impacted by this with the traffic and everything else uh, weren't, their, their voice wasn't heard. So what I realized was maybe there were six or seven stakeholders, but only two stakeholders had any voice in this whatsoever. Because after we talked for eight solid hours, 99% saying, do not do this, the county council said, so sorry, we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, out of the nine out of the 10 of the stakeholders didn't want to do it, but it, the, it, the county, the, 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 uh, they just went and said, we're going to, we're going to do it. Your voice didn't uh, matter. And I'm hearing some real frustration, maybe even anger about that. that your voice wasn't heard. Not only was the voice not heard, but the whole thing was a big sham. It mm -hmm. was a big, uh, we're going to have this, this public commentary, but nobody's going to, th their minds were made up long before the, before the public spoke. Yeah, when they said, hey, we're going to, we want to hear your voice, it was just a, a, a sham because they really didn't want to hear your voice. So what I realized is that's how this country works. Again, it was the people in power were listening to the people who had the money and the people who were impacted by their decision were completely irrelevant to our system. But I aspire to have a system that actually is democratic in that everyone's voice does matter and that the common good is important. Mm -hmm. So in that situation is really the, the uh, people in power and the people who have the money, they're the ones who are making decisions and that's not a democracy. And you really would like a democracy where everyone's voice matters and everyone, all the stakeholders have a, a, a voice in what happens. And I'm wondering if Kenya isn't right, break the whole system down and start over again. In that process, there will be so much bloodshed. There will be so much damage done. And I don't know if we can break it and put something better together because there are people who have absolutely none of the values that we seem. Time, I'm sorry. Uh, she just froze. Frozen. Not oh. sure, maybe your connection. Uh, I don't well, know if you oh, there, we, you just froze the last part, uh, but I, let me reflect back what I heard. Then maybe you could say the rest is uh, you're saying that maybe Kenya has the right idea, just tear the whole thing down and, and, and rebuild it uh, from the ground up. And my fear is that while we would probably build something we would all oh, mm -hmm. want, there are so many who do not share our values and would build something that was just like the original <laughs> systems, maybe worse. Yeah, so if you tear everything down, there'd probably be a lot of people who just build up something that's just as bad or even worse. So there's yeah, concerns about that. Uh, do you feel you. heard? You feel heard, Carla? I feel heard. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'll speak to uh, Candy then. Uh, so so I'm, listening. I'm your listener. Yeah, the listener. Uh huh. Okay. Um, yeah, I, the way I, I sort of frame this discussion is, uh, you know, I heard about the root, you know, problems of America, and I see it in terms of empathy. Of like, here we have a mm -hmm. model of everyone's voice gets heard. So. 
uh, even the cat, <laughs> its voice gets heard. And that's sort of, that's, that's uh, yeah, that, that I see that as sort of the core of democracy, what we're doing here. You said that what we're doing here, um, uh, well, you talked about people identifying the root problems in America, but you're saying that em you, you seem to feel that empathy is the uh, overarching, like, so like the, the essence of democracy. Mm -hmm. And that what we're doing here, where everybody gets heard, um, is what democracy is really is the core of what democracy is. Yeah, hitting the the essence. That's it. that was beautiful. Uh, so when America was formed, it was just uh, white men who had property could vote. So I would not have been able to vote either because I don't have any property. So so it and it's just like. Yeah, so it just, uh, yeah, so it, it just goes down the line, like it starts there, yeah, in terms of uh, lack of empathy. In, in that sense, the core was like, I wouldn't have had a voice, women wouldn't have had a voice, race, you know, different races wouldn't have had a voice, so uh, they wouldn't have been empathized with, their voice wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, you're saying that the country was founded on the principle that only white men who own property could vote. Um, and uh, lots of people would not have been able to participate, uh, yourself included, um, all people of color, women. Um, and so you're saying, and you're describing this as a lack of empathy at the core of democracy. Well, at the core, yeah, the way it's the way it yeah. has played out here, and it was a reaction to uh, the, a king who had like all the power, like, "Hey, I got all the voice here," right? And they say, "Well, we want a voice," and then they, you know, they we got a little bit of a, more of a voice, and it's been a slow progression to giving more and more people a voice. So I guess I see that moving from an authoritarian to an empathic uh, way of being as sort of the as the framework. Yeah, in my mind, that's how I see it. Right. So you, it sounds like you're saying you see the evolution of democracy. So we left, we became a country because we didn't want to have a king. And then, but the people who set all that up didn't want to give it to everybody, just a smaller group. Um, but you're saying that it sounds like you have almost a, like a mental model, if yeah. you will, of this of slow progress moving from authoritarian to whatever we call this thing we have now, democracy or trying, or at least the, the, the ideal, and then ultimately to more empathy. Yeah, I see it's like authoritarianism on one side, one person, you know, one group has the voice towards the other end is empathic where everyone listens to everyone else is sort of the, the poles. I see that as a pole. And can we move towards the pole of every you know voice mattering, everyone being heard to their satisfaction. Right. So so you see a progression from authoritarian to a system that you feel is based on empathy. But I I, th I think you're saying that that's at the core of democracy, and so that when we think about preserving or let's say improving our democracy it's going to be moving along that continuum mm -hmm. set up that you're describing towards empathy exactly we may so in a ta in terms of tasks susan was asking well, what tasks can i do i think it's creating more empathy circles <laughs> getting more people engaged in these empathic dialogues i see okay got the time so that's like tasks that's how what i'm doing to kind of foster democracy is create more empathy circles, more dialogue. And I get the final reflection that I'm complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're saying that um, you feel like what you wanna do to bring that about, like, you know, we all wanna know what each of us can do. And you're saying that for you, it's running these circles and getting this it sounds like you wanna have a momentum where people are, there's a lot of this going on and that you feel that this will help move this progression along that you envision. I feel very well heard, thank you. Um, we still have time, Candy, uh, you can pick a listener. You got a speaker. We have 20 minutes, uh, so plenty of time. Uh, Susan, so I, um, 
share a lot of the sentiments here today. I guess, you know, on this issue of progress, I mean, I grew up in the 1960s, you know, with this, you know, with, with, it, there was a, a sense of, I mean, things were, were pretty bad, but getting better. There was a feeling of optimism. There was voting rights. There was great society. There was great music. It was a, a time where those of us who came of age at that time uh, believed that, you know, like we were told we we're going to have a man on the moon by the end of the decade. We did. I'll stop there. <laughs> so you grew up in the 60s. And it was a time of um, optimism. Uh, you mentioned voting rights. Uh, they said that they were going to put a man on the moon and they did. Right. So we had this, and but but you know, the social studies books that we read were not <laughs> not the complete truth, let's put it that way. But you know, we grew up with a belief in democracy and we saw change happening every day. We saw a horrible war, we saw assassinations, but there was a sense of movement towards better. And that's not there anymore. And it, well, it hasn't been there for 40 years or more, but I think the feeling of democracy being improved upon, this is really what I wanna say, is that that's part of the deal, is that it's always going to be improved upon. So whether it's even climate or what, pick your issue, none of it is going to get any better if we don't have, if we don't preserve the basic system. So we, now the question of, um, do we have to tear it down? Can we fix it from here? I'm not sure. It seems to me that, um, I'll, I'll pause there, okay. I think what you're saying is that um, in the time that you grew up, that you did believe that democracy, there was like, it was evolving toward making things better. And you and and the culture believed that. I think so. And now uh, we just are, we don't know how to make it better anymore because the system is breaking down right in front of our eyes. <laughs> and- Well, I didn't uh, actually say that, but I could have. <laughs> And we don't we don't have a, a solution yet about what to do. So, I mean, it, I think that the system is probably fixable, but it could take a long time. And we, you know, like this, this. I mean, it, it's important that every voice be heard. Like I don't. I mean, this is the thing that's so frightening now because everybody's like, oh, protect the vote, protect the vote. It's what about the sabotage after you cast your ballot? I mean, we're in a very precarious situation, and so. If we can get past that and hold on to this, as I said before, hold on to the way less than perfect democracy. I, I'm not in the constitution either. You know, My rights are not protected in the constitution. So if we can hold on to the less than perfect thing we have, it's really the only chance of getting it to be where we want it to be, I guess is what I'm saying. Maybe I'm naive, I don't know, but you know, if you can, you know, like you imagine a Democrat, a progressive, progressive Democrats taking, you know, in Congress. Um, I don't know. I mean, again, like you, one can envision an unrolling of Citizens United and, um, you know, a, a reversing of some of the worst of neoliberalism. Like you could imagine that happening, not in our lifetimes, but you can imagine being on a better trajectory, I think. I don't know. That wasn't a small chunk, but no, it wasn't. And I, I'm, I'm trying to really understand. I think what you're saying is, is that it's not going to happen right away. It's, it's going to take a while. But if we could hold on to what we have instead of tearing it all down, and then there are things like, even though it's less than perfect. Uh, you believe that we should just kind of hold on. And then you said something about Citizens U United and maybe over time that'll gain force or, you know, work with what we have instead of tearing everything down. I'm saying that Thank there's you. a few major levers that could be tweaked to get us back on a better track, I think. 
Thank you. Susan, you are now the speaker. Would you okay. like to pick as your listener? Candy. Okay. I'll do my best. Uh, uh, look, I... I, I uh, okay. Um, I think unless we have an education, like your system, listener, is like, I did. like the candy. Oh, sorry, I, I got distracted. Sorry. Okay, unless we have an educational system that's going to educate uh, the um, not just intellectual knowledge, but the heart and values and. Uh, uh, Empathy would be a course, and listening would be a course. I mean, something that an educational system that's going to work on a spiritual, soul um, basis that for real change to happen. Otherwise, it, it's not going to matter. We'll go to the moon and we're going to bring all our greed and selfishness with us. So I think we have to start with the educational system, uh, what Candy was saying to, uh, it's gonna take time, but um, that's, that's important to work with education right now for the future generations. Um, did you wanna repeat that? Yeah, so what Susan's saying is that we need a, well, she started off with a really lovely sigh of frustration, which I totally appreciated. Um, then about the education system that we need to teach values, we need to teach empathy, we need to teach listening skills and also with a spiritual component um, that in starting in a, when I assume she means when to, you know people are little for the next generation to have these values that will be more supportive of a democracy, right? or supportive of like, I, li I don't know about that program or that you mentioned humanity rising. I, I do believe that humanity inside has a divine aspect, not religious, but like divine. And we're not educating to evolve that. We're just educating for, you know, the market economy pretty much. Right. So uh, I, I developed a program, this is not a plug, and uh, I could not get it in the American school system. So I taught it in Brazil and it was very well received there. We need to educate the authentic self in each person because when each person gets in touch with their sole purpose, what they're supposed to be doing, a mission, the whole society would change. We got to change the basis of, of what, you know, it's about educating the authentic self, guys. That's how I see it. Okay. Um, do you know what that means, the authentic self? I sure do. Oh. I, 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 it, <laughs> it's, it's a goal I strive towards. What you're saying is that we have to focus as a society, and I think you're implying starting with young people, the divine aspect of, of ourselves rather than just the market-driven um, self as, a, as we all folk, you know, in other words, this yeah, I don't want to put words in your mouth. So you, you um, developed a program, you couldn't get it um, into the schools here, um, but you were able to uh, put the program on in Brazil and the focus being um, teaching t uh, young people, children about to recognize their authentic self and their purpose. All ages. All ages, okay. Yeah, and then, you know, it's not like we're going to tear it down, Kenya. Well, you know what? What are we going to put in its place if we don't work on our inner selves to make it something better? And that's why I started off sharing to you how powerful it was for me to choose peace. I choose peace. Yeah, so... Um... She you, she chooses peace. She doesn't know. I, I, I was, you don't. It sounded like you don't think tearing it down is the answer necessarily. But that we're going to make in its place. Well, we, right. What okay. will we replace it with? But if we Hello. we can get people to embrace peace and to choose peace, that 
we can get to a better place. Thank you. Candy, you are now the speaker. You can pick a listener. Oh. We have about 10 minutes left. Kevin. Okay. Uh, Kevin. <laughs> sure. All right. I, um, I agree with everything that Susan just said. Um, I, might, I mean, I don't want to say I've given up on politics because I haven't, but um, I'm profoundly disappointed with the Democratic Party. And- um, Also me. You agree with everything that Susan says, um, but you're not totally in agreement with the Democratic Party. So I really I, need small chunks, yes. I so In other words, I don't want to give up on politics. You don't want to give up on I, politics. Been, you know, it's kind of in my DNA to be politically engaged and aware and follow the news and, you know, I've. It's just, it's, but um, I'm becoming kind of um, this, uh, this, I don't know. But, but what I wanted to, the, the segue to what Susan said was the spiritual piece. And that um, when, when Tim Ryan told all his colleagues in the Senate, or was it, so what, it talking about meditation, they all kind of made fun of him. But that's really kind of, I believe, uh, what we need to do. We have to make people recognize that we're all in this together and we have to get rid of the scarcity mindset that has destroyed this culture. So in reference to um, paraphrasing what you were saying, you know, the democracy is in your DNA. This is part of who you are. You don't wanna fray away from it. But when Tim Ryan spoke about meditation, you know, you go back to where Susan talking about the emotional aspect in reference to the spiritual, and we need to be more a part of that and come in reference to society. Did I get that right? More or less. I, I think that we, we have, <laughs> it goes back to values, you know, like we have shifted, you know, people talk about neoliberalism, real, the way I did like to describe that is that we have shifted from a society with intrinsic values or at least a balance, okay? There was more of a balance of intrinsic and extrinsic. And now we move to a society that's completely founded on and run by on extrinsic values, materialism. Uh, you know, they talk about the school system. How are we gonna teach them uh, to meditate or to be empathic when we have to train them to turn out widgets or whatever, you know? So the system is broken. Okay. Um, so what I hear is in reference to one, the system is broken. There's a lot of reference to values, reference to intrinsic, and extrinsic, and since we're teaching them how to make widgets, we're not teaching them to think or to be empathic. So we have a long journey to go in reference to how do we change the education system or anyone. Right. But here's the thing: if we getting back to how we solve the immediate problem, if we can preserve the shitty democracy we have and get better people in office, better people making the rules, the laws, then we can get to a better place where we fund education, where we fund arts and, and uh, social emotional education for kids, you know, where we change the ethos, where it's not all about profit, where everything is not privatized, where there's a recognition of the common. And one of the things you speak about in reference to, we can change the guard, get rid of the um, people that are there and the right people in who are going to take on the voting rights, the, um, the business, not worry about profit, but worry about education, you know, positive change. You listed a lot of things along with that. I, I think you got the, the gist of it. I mean, I, I guess, I, you know, I mean, it, it was, Thank you. I guess, you know, it'd be very easy to, and I often feel very, you know, despondent about all of this, but I think that, you know, I don't know. I, I, the solutions are obvious. You know, it's just a question of how we're going to get them to be implemented. And again, we're at a really critical moment here because, if, you know, the next two years are going to be really uh, decisive in terms of the future of this country. Like we say that, it seems like we say that all the time, but it just feels more truer now than ever in my lifetime, certainly. Um, it's a lot to impact. <laughs> And I guess I lost a lot of it, but more or less in our lifetime, it's going to be a lot to change um, until we get to the intrinsic values of what democracy is. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it's, 
it's it's a lot. And until we get to the root cause, we can't change anything and we have to put the right people in. And I know I'm repeating some parts, but I'm not, I lost some parts, my apology. Well, I talk, I talk fast and I, once I get going, I get very excited. Um, I, I, I think that I, I don't want to give up on my country. Wonderful. Okay. Um, and I don't really have any, I mean, I think that the answers are obvious what we need to do, how we're going to get there. I'm not sure, but I feel like if we don't, I, I think what has, there has to be accountability for January 6th. Right, okay. Sooner rather than later. Let's start right. there. Um, you spoke about accountability for January 6th. You don't want to give up democracy. Their answers are there. We just have to move towards them. I'm going to stop there. And I hope I captured some or most. <laughs> um, all right, we only have about three minutes left, if I'm correct, Alvin. Yeah, about uh, four minutes. Probably four time minutes. for one turn, or we could just kind of do a quick debrief if you'd like. So, sure, anybody like to do a quick debrief? Um, we're going to be debriefing in the full group. Uh, it will have 20 minutes for that, but maybe we can do a round. Just how was it? Yvonne, were you in one of the other groups or you got dropped or are you just joining us right now? Yeah, I'm not hearing. Okay. Are we going to have a bathroom break? Uh, you can take it as at your leisure, just whenever okay. you want to go. You know, if you want to take a break, well, we have about 20 minutes uh, left. So this, just take one minute, like everyone was saying, to go around um, in reference to your thoughts. Uh, just one minute, quick. We'll keep more like going. thirty seconds. <laughs> thirty seconds. Okay. Who like to go first, so I can pick someone. So oh, I just yeah. wanted to, you know, we were we were talking about breaking it down, and it and it dawned on me, Steve Bannon came in and immediately said he was going to break it, that they were going to break it. And they have been incredibly successful in breaking it. And I, you know, starting from scratch is, is so appealing, except that how does it get broken and how do you start from scratch and how do you get people to agree that these are the values upon which we are going to build a new society? It's, it's- Do you want to say- do you want to say yeah, something yeah, about how is the experience? One more thing. We confuse the system of democracy with the system of capitalism. They aren't the same, but having democracy with this kind of unregulated capitalism is a total impossibility. Do you want to say like, something about the experience and the empathy? How was the, your experience taking part in the empathy circle? Um, I find it, I find it, difficult because uh, because when someone says something you have to wait until it gets around back to you and you're all tangled up in the list it, it's it's quite difficult it's a very challenging system okay you yeah. like to go next i guess i would you know like one thing that i feel frustrated about is we never got to talk about truth and justice you know empathy is great but, you know, there is justice that really has to be, we have to find justice for people, you know, because it's not, it's an unfit, there's unfairness, and there's, you know, discrimination, and, you know, and there's pushing people outside of the system, and, you know, it's, it's more than just empathy, it's about justice, and also about truth in the sense that, you know, people have such different realities right now, we can't even agree upon the facts. And if we can't agree upon the facts, you know, consensus is impossible. And yeah. so, and my experience of this group is, yeah, that it's hard to like really interact and get the discussion going because it gets fragmented in this coming back and okay. so it's a little frustrating. Okay, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I will say um, when I do a one on one with somebody and we're having and I'm sitting, I feel like I'm able to listen, but and and really hear them. But I don't know if I'm within this, how it is set up, how I'm like, oh, OK, let me make sure that I'm saying everything right. It, you know, I don't know. It seems a little 
little disconcert, you know, I'm like eh, discombobulated a little bit. So um, in terms of the whole process, a little bit of, I, I listen and then I talk, but a lot of times I'd rather just listen and let you talk about what it is that you need to say, and then maybe ask another question. So, you know, so it's like that and then having whatever come off. So, you know, empathy, I am all about it. I'm all about justice. I'm all about curiosity, all of those things. And, and I'm, I'm down for the empathy circles and stuff. And I hope this really goes far. Um, yes, and. Just a quick Thank note, I closed the rooms. Everybody's going to be coming back in. We're going to be doing a debrief. We're going to be going around and calling on everyone uh, to do a, a, a debrief. In, in just, uh, we have about uh, 15 seconds. Everybody will be popping back in. And we'll try to get to as many people as possible. And nine seconds and selling the room's going to get very full. Okay. No, no, okay. So thanks everyone. Appreciate your listening and really had a really good time listening. Just appreciate all the different voices. Really grateful for that. That's it, y'all. We're back. Okay, here the we come swan. back. <laughs> uh, welcome back. I think everybody should be back now. So what we're going to do now is do a go through and hear from everyone for 30 seconds. You got to keep it really quick. Uh, Larry's going to call on people. He's going to like ruthlessly cut you off with the time. If you go over the 30 seconds, we're trying to get to as many people as we can. Uh, and then we'll have a, a quick, you know, a few comments uh, in closing. So take it okay, away, we Larry. Lost, we lost somebody. So if you would keep an eye out for him, uh, Randy. Okay. Yeah. I'm right here. I, 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 I just oh. uh, went back to the, the main room as soon I, I, I hit enter right as the uh, the closed dialogue was, was okay. coming up. So I got okay. jumped out. Yeah. He's back. All right. So welcome back. And I'm just going to go around the screen and ask everyone to share for about 30 seconds of what's the empathy circle experience like? What is the experience like? Share any insights and how does it feel? Does it work? And I'll start with Glenn. Would you share for about 30 seconds? What was the experience like? Glenn, I think you're, you're muted. It was great to hear other people's perspectives. Um, we all agreed we wish we had a little more spontaneous interaction. Um, it was kind of discouraging, I think, our group in the end, you know. We're not sure if democracy can be saved. <laughs> Thank you, Glenn. And Carla, would you share, please? Well, I, I voiced in the in my little group that I feel that the, the this process has its real strengths and it has its real frustrations, um, and I also mm. feel that we were talking without really having adequate definitions as to what systems are system, the system of racism, the system of democracy, the system of capitalism, the system of, of empathetic listening, all of those systems, um, sometimes you get lost without having common understanding of, of which one what what that system is all about and how it functions within the parameters of the discussion. Thank you, Carla. And Kevin, would you share, please? Again, I believe, um, echo everybody, I say it was a very challenging uh, discussion. It did bounce around a lot of places. It was very challenging, you know, like Carla was saying, to follow because everyone was moving in different directions that it became democracy and their perception or their understanding or their definition. Um, but ultimately, um, it was still a great opportunity for people to come around to bring it to the table. Thank you, Kevin. And Candy, would you share, please? Yeah, um, this was the first time I participated in uh, an empathy circle. Um, I found it a little choppy um, you know, and, and I was, and I would like to have had more 
I mean, it's not the system doesn't do this, but so but, but I, I found it frustrating that there was not an opportunity for more, you know, not to interrupt people to, you know, find a mechanism to not interrupt, but to still be able to have exchanges. But I will say, uh, I think you said early on that the ideal number is four. We had six at one time, I point we might have had seven. So I will reserve judgment on this process until I'm in experience it in a smaller group because maybe it's maybe it comes around faster in a smaller group so some of those some of the choppiness may not be there mm -hmm. I don't know thank you Candy and Susan would you share please hi yeah um Candy I sent you a direct chat um I I think that if we could come together as a group and create a pro an educational program that would include empath empathic listening, along with other um, courses to develop the authentic human being, and then you know that would be something to um, help people connect to their deeper self in a way that would preserve our values and our democracy. But only empathic listening by itself, uh, why not make an in, inter, um, what's the word? You know, I can't think of interdisciplinary um, program that includes empathic listening. Thank you, Susan. And Randy, would you share please? Yeah, this was my also my first uh, empathy circle experience. I, I really enjoyed the process in our breakout room. I, I tend to be very passionate about things, and and I really did feel uh, heard, uh, you know, truly uh, in in the things that I was saying. Um, uh, my concerns, perhaps, are with uh, the idea of balance. Um, I you know I'm, I'm involved in bridge building uh, professionally. And, you know, for, for me and for my own organization, it's really important that we have a full range of perspectives in the conversation. And I am a little concerned that we don't. Uh, I think that the, the empathy uh, framing can tend to be uh, fairly blue language uh, and that um, conservatives tend to be reluctant to engage in this conversation. And, and I heard one of our, our folks reflect upon that, that they had, they had invited uh, more conservative leaning folks into the conversation, but those folks uh, were afraid that they would be judged harshly and that, that, that they would be ridiculed. Um, and so I think in order for this, this work to actually be effective, uh, that needs to be addressed. Thank you, Randy. And Donna, would you share please? Yes, um, and just to mention my battery is very low. So, uh, well, uh, often on Zoom, you can be very passive and just listen as you will have dialogues in your head. But this was actual work to actively listen, <laughs> actively listen and reflect back. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I'm willing to try it again before judging, uh, you know, a little interchange by more interchange might be good, but this works too. And um, ending on something, uh, I don't know what to say. I want to say positive, something, and you know, concluding in some way, which our facilitator did. She gave an example of something doable. Um, so that was that was good to kind of bring us out. And then just that what was said, we had a lot in common. We had a lot of human experience and fears and concerns that were in common. So uh, that helps validate. Thank you, Donna. And Francesca, would you share, please? Yeah, I really appreciated what everybody had to share. I, I, I mainly shared, you know, my direct experience regarding um, authoritarianism and my concerns around seeing it in the world i mean it's popping up everywhere right it's just there's it's very disconcerting and uh you know i'm just really hoping that the world comes together as a community because i feel like capitalism alienates us from one another we don't live in community so much anymore and that's why it's so easy for people to follow because 
there's no commitment to community, to one another, right? To help each other out, to have each other's back, you know, um, that's capitalism, right? So um, anyway, I'm hoping there will be a shift and that the world will wake up and that we will reclaim our freedoms. Thanks. Thank you, Francesca. And Virginia, would you share, please? Hi, yes, I felt heard. This is my first time, the Empathy Circle, and I enjoyed the process of the act of listening and uh, sharing feelings, uh, staying in the present moment. Um, I'm re reminded of the power of words, and uh, many of us can reflect back a little bit on Thich Nhat Hanh as he passed on yesterday. Uh, and he, he, he mentioned that a lot in, in, uh, in speaking. When we communicate with each other, if we stay away from using uh, blaming, criticizing, bitterness, and angry words, because words can cause great suffering or they can cause joy, inspiration, and hope. I, I was happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. And would the gentleman on your right like to share? Sure, Larry. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I thought that it was interesting in, in some ways, I have to say, with a Candy, I, I thought it sometimes your thought process could be interrupted with so much reflection, I think. Uh, but I understand that's how the empathy circle works, but it, uh, it seems to interrupt some of the thoughts when you're trying to get out a full thought and process and cuts it a little shorter. But uh, outside of that, I thought that it was a, a, a good exchange in a short period of time for so many. Thank you. Celine, mm -hmm. would you share, please? Um. Well, I, I thought we were supportive of each other in um, approaching a difficult subject that is actually <clears throat> uh, attached to a lot of pain and fear. And um, so it was a good beginning for me. Um, I would like to see how it can evolve over time. Thank you. Thank you, Celine. And Joan, would you share, please? Um, Joan? Okay. Uh, yes, um, we had a, a really very good discussion. And I'm usually someone that's not as supportive of stopping and reflecting, but it worked really well in our group. And we also had international participation, which was was great. Um, and I felt like it was an excellent start. I did, we did run into something, it's a personal thing, and I don't know if it's my computer or my hearing, because I do have some hearing issues, but um, I was having a particularly hard time reflecting on somebody that has a beautiful accent from the Netherlands. And um, so we, ha we had to actually shift and have somebody step in. Um, and we thought about that as far as having people participate if there, if there is a, a way we don't have um, captions but uh, you know, have something put in the chat box or something. Uh, so that, that was, it never happened to me before, but um, I felt like uh, I'm probably not alone with that. Um, and so um, I just thought I'd, I'd mention that, but it, we had a wonderful conversation and covered all kinds of areas that I, I didn't expect. Thank you, Joan. And Judith, would you share please? Yeah, so um, I don't know. I found our group rather moving. Um, I I think that there's there's an understanding in our society that we have most of us have not been trained, quote unquote, in listening. And so I think a structure uh, to enable a reflective listening is really important. 
and it does foster empathy because without, um, and, and that is more than a thought process, it's a feeling into the other person's experience uh, and, the, and the beautiful uh, thoughts that, that others had. So um, we had an interesting, uh, someone from the Netherlands who talked about um, the multi-party system there and how that helps with people feeling heard when there's a multi-party system as opposed to op two oppositional parties where there's a kind of demonization of one against the other. So um, I, I really uh, was, was rather moved by a lot of the um, um, dialogue that occurred and I felt very heard, so. Thank you, Judith. And Linda, would you share, please? Okay. Um, our, our group was um, very um, vanilla. And I'll say that because we all agreed on, on everything, you know, so there was no, I would have uh, appreciated having somebody with a different point of view, um, political view, uh, because we all agreed on the same thing. And um, but, but it was good that we had this process, this structured process. I do want to uh, comment on something, a couple of things other people have said about the meanings of words. And I, and I am into semantics and words do have meanings. And sometimes we need to clarify what we mean but when we use a certain word so to make sure everybody's on the same page. And then in a smaller group, because we did, we only had four, uh, we had five and then somebody dropped out, but you do have more opportunity to speak and you can piggyback on what somebody said when it's your turn to speak, whether you agree with them, didn't agree with them or, or, or had something else to add to it. So that is a way to keep the conversation going. Uh, but I, our group, I, we did good in terms of staying within the process, but um, I guess I, was, I, was, I wanted a little bit more controversy. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. And Mary, would you share, please? Yes, this is not my first time. I had a good time as usual, but I must say that I was hoping that we would have a little bit more discussion about the book. I enjoyed uh, reading the book and some of the ideas. And what I got out of the first couple of chapters is that people have to uh, have their own ideas of right and wrong and be able to act on those. And I believe that that was brought out in our discussion. I would say, go Edwin, go, go Edwin, <laughs> go. <laughs> if you know anybody in California, make sure that they can vote for him. But I appreciate <laughs> the opportunity. And I would say people that you have in mind that don't agree, invite them along. I don't know mm -hmm. anybody that doesn't agree with me. <laughs> you know people that don't agree, and I think some of the fear piggybacking on Randy is that possibly, you know, if we showed up in their group, they need us alive. So maybe they're <laughs> afraid that the same thing will happen to them. And I think we can reassure them that that definitely won't happen in this group because we're open to hear everybody's ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. And Leo, would you share, please? Yes, we ended up with an irony. On the one hand, a, a empathy circle can help us find common ground to know that maybe our differences are not as great as we think and that we might uh, be more alike than different if we talk to each and listen. But on the other hand, we discover a great diversity even among people we thought were all the same. And so that diversity brings joy to our life as our Netherland partner said at the end of our discussion. So on one hand, we come closer together in our commonality. On the other hand, we learn to celebrate our differences. Thank you, Leo. And Jana, would you share please? Oh, um... Well, so, you know, I've facilitated a little bit and this democracy circle is, was more challenging uh, for, to facilitate. We, we had a lot of uh, different ideas and different um, 
I my book didn't arrive. Amazon said they delivered, but they didn't <laughs> deliver. And, uh, so I watched the videos. Um, yeah, we had accessibility issue, and uh, hopefully I dealt with it skillfully. Deirdre was helpful. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, we had international uh, pro vaccine and, and and no vaccine and all vaccine and and you know concern for uh, our maintaining our humanity without bringing down people with ridicule and and an international perspective from the Netherlands and Australia and it was quite a quite exciting thank you so much thank you Jenna. just wanted to note this is the, the time but we want to we're going to go over if you just have to go feel free to uh drop out we do want to hear from everyone else there is a link there to fill out the the uh, evaluation uh if you can do that too so yeah uh, go ahead larry thank you Ed. and jerome would you share please Yes, yeah, sorry. I just I was yeah. just looking for the link that uh, Ruth meant. Um, okay, this was the first time for me uh, experiencing it uh, uh, firsthand, and it, it I really I like the group that I was in. I mean, maybe <laughs> I'm, this is not uh, always like that, but <laughs> I was really like very impressed with um, uh, like there was everybody was so much personally affected, or almost everybody, maybe. Uh, not everybody, but like about by the political things that the book is talking about. So I think the book is very relevant to um, to to get people to connect to things in their personal life. And and I was quite uh, impressed about how how things are affecting people. So was, I think that's really a helpful process. Uh, process is really helpful to get people to to like bring things out that they normally can't do in a normal discussion. Uh, but I was also thinking. I want to learn more. I want to ask questions. I want to like talk to this person much longer. So that was a bit frustrating. Um, and also to think, make things I'm really difficult. I've got uh, like a lot of difficulty expressing myself verbally to make it so, so short that it can be done in time and somebody can reflect it's, it's a challenge. And also being so much impressed, it made it very difficult to listen because yeah, my head is full with all those thoughts and then trying to reflect back even a couple of words it's like uh, I, I forget already the first part so it's interesting to see that such a simple process is still very challenging to do in practice under uh, real cognitive load and emotional affection thank you jerome thank you and tracy would you share please yes thank you so overall i really enjoyed the session um, I learned that when the other person's talking too much that I could put my hand up um, so that I can at least uh, respond. Um, I would have personally preferred four people in the room because I would have really liked to have heard my voice a little bit more um, to be more engaged. Um, and I love the balance. So where everybody speaks for equal amount of times. So it met my need for that. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. And Sally, would you share, please? Sure. Um, well, I've done a number of empathy circles and facilitations, but, um, well, it wasn't vanilla in my mind because I am trying to say, how? How are we going to get these very vocal, frustrated people who are Trumpers to participate? And um, so I appreciated what Randy said. And um, we've got to think about that and how we uh, manage it before we bring them in. I have two people willing to participate. Thank you, Sally. <clears throat> and Deidre, would you share, please? Uh it's always a learning experience. It's always an opportunity to reflect. Um, today, I think my reflection was on my perfectionism and trying to get things right instead of being in the moment. And I was really appreciative of the feedback that Tracy shared with me about just, let's just be us. So I, I was grateful for that. I also um, 
I really have to think about when I have a reaction, you know, how does that affect my demeanor? What can I do when I'm hearing something that I vehemently disagree with or that I really agree with? How do I sort of take a breath and stay even and present? It's an ongoing practice and I'm grateful for the group for that. Thank you, DJ. And the, the little screens are moving around a little bit. Did I miss <laughs> anyone? I certainly don't want to miss anyone. I, the, the screens it's now it looks like. Uh, was a, a Glenn or is Glenn already went? I'm not sure. I think Glenn, you went first, actually. The screens are just moving a little bit. And then, say again, Celine, please. Edwin, that guy Edwin. at the top. <laughs> Everyone except me is gone. Is that right? If you haven't, if you've been. And Larry okay. hasn't spoken either. Oh yeah, Larry, you want to go ahead? I'll do the uh, last. I just love these empathy circles. I think it's, um, you know, I think it's the missing link to human communication, and it's probably our, 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 our hope for bringing the world together to sit down at a table and not shoot one another, but listen to one another. And that's it was beautiful. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Larry. I think that is one of the points about the empathy circle. You're really learning to listen. We talk about free speech, but we need what we need is free empathy too. <laughs> free speech and free empathy go together. And when you first do this process, it's, it's a little bit of anxiety, you know, getting familiar with it. But you'll find uh, next week it'll be much easier. And after each week, it'll get easier. We did have larger groups. We didn't have enough facilitators for the smaller groups. Uh, so we will try to have smaller groups, which means you'll have more engagement in, in the uh, future circles. Plus, you'll be kind of mixed up with different people in different weeks. So you kind of try hopefully connect with uh, a wide variety of people in the groups. And uh, like uh, I think uh, Sally was saying, bring friends. It's like, don't say, hey, there's nobody with other ideas here. Go reach out and bring them. You know, go. Uh, so that's uh, it's your job to. Uh, between now and then is to invite others to the uh to the to this circle and uh, i will post this here if you could uh if you can if you're able to kind of open click on that link to fill out the evaluation form and if you can just uh click on that with your browser should open up in a browser uh just add your email uh take a second to add your email and then your name and we're going to leave you uh, with that form. If you can fill that out, give us feedback, ideas for you know how to improve the the uh, circle process. Uh, any other ideas? Uh, just post it in there, and uh, so we can kind of harvest those uh, insights. So uh, we'll end with that, and we'd like to end with our jazz hands, uh, twinkle fingers, jazz hands, just to get a group portrait of everyone. And can we get uh, turn your cameras on if you can get a picture and see you next week then and bye -bye. thanks so much for taking part. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, where's the yeah. Hi everyone. Thank you, Edwin bye -bye. and everyone. Bye everyone.